wish they would. I wish they'd stop. They will once they get used to you. If they get used to you. Who was that? Laura Faye Flannery from Abilene, Kansas. She transferred last week. She's in my English 3 class. That's a high school student? Some high school student, hmm? Huh? When I was one in 20, I heard a wise man say, give crowns and pounds and guineas, but not your heart away. Give pearls away and rubies, but keep your fancy free. But I was one in 20, no use to talk to me. When I was one in 20, I heard him say again, the heart out of the bosom was never given in vain. Tis paid with sighs of plenty and sold for endless rue. And I am two and twenty. And oh, tis true, tis true. Now, what is the poet saying? Jason? That's an easy one. What the man is saying, that it's cool to mess around long as you don't take it serious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Good, Jason. Uh, anybody else with a more orthodox interpretation? Laura Fay? Or, or do you prefer to be called Laura? Why don't you try gorgeous? Try girl. <laughs> uh, Laura Fay would be just fine. She sure is. Come on now, that's enough of that. Go on, Laura Fay. Well, it's really a very straightforward poem. Um, Mr. Hausman is investigating an attitude that's universal with young people. Uh, which, which is that, um, well, we think we know it all, and we're unable to, to benefit by the advice of our elders. Hey, uh, stand up. I can't see what you're saying. Herbie, now I told you that's enough of that. Go on, Lord Fay. Um, well, un until it's too late. Laura Fay, that was a very interesting analysis you were making. Do you like poetry? Yeah. I guess I got it from my dad. He used to read poems and stories like other fathers read the sports page. In fact, one of his favorite poets was Walt Whitman. There was a child went forth every day, and, and the first object he looked upon, that object he became, that was my father's favorite. I'd like to meet him. Well, why don't you tell him to come to one of our PTA meetings? Well, he doesn't, he doesn't live at home anymore. He went off somewhere a few years ago because he and my mom didn't get along. Well, I'll see you. Uh, Laura Faye. Um, well, I'm glad you enjoy poetry. Uh, to so many of the kids, it's such a drag. Um, Next week, we're going to get into Walt Whitman, and if you like, well, we'll do. There was a child went forth. Yeah, I'd like that. Okay. So what do you say, Pete? You got four young geniuses for me? Well, if you want a couple of bright kids, I might be able to help you out. How about you, Miss Johnson? You got a couple of Einsteins under wraps up there? They're talking about the high school quiz bowl. Oh, yeah, I heard something about that. What's up? It's a local TV special. All the city schools submit teams of their best students. Then they have the usual runoffs, and the two best teams appear on the show. Sounds great. Well, we got to have a few victories of some kind around here. The football team's performing like a bunch of Danish ballet dancers. We have the <laughs> shortest basketball team in history. I don't even want to talk about the track team. <laughs> If we don't at least get an intellectual victory, I'm going to have to go to the next high school principal's meeting incognito. Sounds neat. What'll you wear? Will you give me my jacket? Sure is. What, Cut it out. What's going on back there? Will you let me have my jacket? Sure. <laughs> Instead of tormenting a girl like that, why aren't they trying to get her phone number? Well, at least they got her to notice them. I mean, a girl who looks like that is a little bit much for a teenager to handle. The part in him that's a man is hanging in there, but the part of him that's a little boy is scared to death. And the poor, gorgeous girl turns out to be the victim. I should know. Oh, you've had that problem. Oh, no. No, I've read about it. It's a classic example of the Dollard Miller's approach avoidance conflict. 
Really? Right. Look, I may not be gorgeous, but I am well read. Take your seats, please. I have a few announcements to make before we get started. <clears throat> uh, one, there has been an epidemic of smoking in the laboratories. <laughs> Students are warned that anyone found smoking anywhere on school grounds will be severely punished. Two, our next open house for parents will be Thursday the 15th at 7.30 in the cafeteria. Please impress upon your parents the importance of attending these meetings. Why are those open houses always on Thursday? I don't know. Why? Well, my parents said they'd really like to come, except it conflicts with their bridge night. <laughs> Tell them change their bridge night. Hey, yeah, I never thought of that. <laughs> oh, yes, and I've been wanting to mention this for a while. Walt Whitman will be competing for a place on the high school quiz bowl TV special. You mean some of us get the chance to be on TV? Well, you get a chance to compete, Richie. You know, you all do. Uh, you have to talk to my agent. I only do network shows. <laughs> uh, I'm your man, Miss Johnson. I mean, I'm not smart, but if it's beauty you want, how can you go wrong? Easy. <laughs> oh, man, you weirdos are really out of touch. What you need on your panel is a well-groomed kid with lots of class. You missed the message, Bernie. This is for brains. You're doing awful this semester. Well, I didn't know the old image was at stake. I mean, I'll try this time. Uh, how's it going to work? Well, if you'll all stop auditioning for one second, I'll tell you. Thank you. Now, I'm to select four students and one alternate to compete at the Whitman Finals on Friday. Now, I'm going to give a special test tomorrow on poetry and literature. Those of you who wish to take it may, and those of you who don't, to spend the period in the library. So, how many takers? Are you really going to take that dumb test? Sure, why not? What for? I don't know, to see how much I know, I guess. But what's that got to do with anything? Boy, if I had your looks, I'd be making a fortune modeling or doing commercials or, you know, something. You could have anything you wanted. I don't know what I want, but you sure sound like my mom. I think the reason why she brought us out here is because she thought I could be a movie star. So. Well, face it, dingbat, you got it. Why waste it? What have I got, Rita? You're putting me on. No, I really want to know. What have I got that you want? Your looks, the way you make the guys feel when they look at you. But how about the way I feel when they look at me? Hey, Laura, you don't know how lucky you are. You've got it made. Say, so, Rita, did you ever feel lonely? <laughs> With six brothers and sisters, fat chance. I used to be able to talk to my dad. My mom's kind of different, though. She's got this thing about how it's supposed to happen for me. You know, all her ideas always end up with me finding a rich husband. So what's the matter with that? I don't know, just to be acquired, that doesn't seem right to me, you know what I mean? Uh-uh, but why sweat it? Hey, you want to go to the record store after school? No, I, I got to go over and do some reading at the library. You're really going to study for that test? Sure, why not? I just can't see wasting time on something you don't have to do. Yeah, but that's the whole point, Rita. I do have to do it. Okay, now you tell me what was so good about it, and I will tell you why I wanted to leave. Pete, I told you last night. You missed the symbolism entirely. Symbolism? You must have read something into it that wasn't there. You saw it. What did you think? Well, I don't know if it was good or bad. As long as it had Jean-Paul Belmondo, I didn't care. Anybody need a referee? Pete and I went to the movies last night, and we disagree on what we saw. I wish I could disagree on what I just saw. What, the swim meet? What happened? Walt Whitman failed to place in the inner city finals, first time in six years. Oh, no. Oh, cheer up, Mr. Kaufman. I have a silver lining right here some very high test scores. Oh, great. Who are your winners? Milton, 
Burns, Shelley, and Shakespeare are all mentioned in Robert Browning's The Lost Leader. Now, why did he mention these famous names? Because he was a name dropper. <laughs> <laughs> Richie? It's almost the end of the period. Oh, right. I'm glad you reminded me. You know, whenever I get into Browning, I just lose all track of time. Teach me. Only teach, love. As I ought, I will speak thy speech, love, think thy thought. Wow. Um, aren't you forgetting something? Oh, yes, your assignments. Oh. What about the test results? Oh, yes, I have them right here. Um, please read test scores. It's about time. Okay, I'll read the name of the four high scores and the alternate. Richie Lane. Well, I'll do my best to be worthy of this honor for the greater glory of Walt Whitman. Oh, <laughs> Ralph, Ralph Yamamoto. Bernie. Couldn't happen to a better man. <laughs> and Laura Faye Flannery. Laura, wow. You've got to be kidding. Laura Faye Flannery? Huh? I can't believe it. That's America for you folks. Anyone can win. It's funny, she don't look smart. What an intelligent body. And the alternate is Helen Loomis. Now, I thought this was a test of knowledge, not a beauty contest. I demand a recount. <laughs> Will the winners please come up here? Uh, we'd better go over the requirements for the qualifying finals. What will be required of you, my dear, is a shorter skirt and a lower blouse. I changed my mind, Miss Jones, and I don't want to go into the final. See that? She's too sensitive for showbiz. Which is more than I can say for you. bow out or you're just running away from something you can't handle? No big deal, Miss Johnson. I just don't want the hassle. What do you mean by hassle? The teasing, the smart remarks? Well, you heard them. I heard them. I heard their hassle, not yours. Laura Fay, there are just some women that make some men feel inadequate just by walking into a room. They don't have to do anything or say anything. It just happens. That's not fair. It's not fair or unfair. It just is. Listen, Miss Johnson, I just want to be left alone. Helen wants to go into the finals. Let her, OK? No, not OK. Look, you scored 10 points higher than Helen. And she doesn't need to learn how to hang in there. You do. Look, you want to know who scored highest in the test? You did. Well, I should have. I was up all night studying through 15 different books and making notes and figuring what questions you were going to ask. Oh, I wanted to win. I really wanted to show them. You did. No, I didn't. It didn't change a thing. They've got it firm in their heads that I belong in the center of some girly magazine. Well, maybe they're right. Like Rita says, why sweat it? Excuse me. Oh. I don't know. Maybe you guys could have done something. You know, Laura Fay was really down. I sure didn't help matters any. Well, how can you show a girl how to accept being a woman? That's something she'll have to learn on her own. But what if she doesn't? You know, she has so much going for her. But I'm afraid Laura Fay just might quit on herself if somebody doesn't do something. That's right. And she's that somebody. Laura Fay's got to stand up for herself. Well, the guys are being kind of rough on her. I'll get to them and have a talk. You mean get the boys to quit bugging her? Well, what good is that going to do? What happens when she leaves Whitman and goes out into the world? Who's going to have a little talk with the boys then? School should prepare Laura Faye for the world outside, not turn her into a hothouse tomato. Boy, Liz, you make the outside world sound like a prize fight. Well, in a way, it is. Right now, the most important thing for Laura Faye is to dig in her heels and make a stand. Well, here's to a brave new world. Here's to courageous decisions. Yeah. My fan club 
this out. Don't encourage me. Oh, Laura, don't be so weird. Hi, Bernie. I don't understand why you get so bent out of shape every time you get a compliment. Hey, uh, Laura Faye, you want to play on our team? Hey, Rita, how come your gym suit don't fit like Laura Faye's? <laughs> we need the volleyball court. The body, beautiful. Why, folks, as I live and breathe, it's Aphrodite herself. I got it! I got it! I got it! I got it! Oh, it's okay, Laura Faye. Uh, here, no basketball, Laura Faye. It's all clear. Well, maybe it was a pigeon. <laughs> Please leave me alone. No, you're okay, Laura Faye. You're okay, Laura Faye. You're okay, Laura Faye. I touched her, I touched her, I'll never wash this hand again. You're okay, Laura Faye. 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 Hey, you guys. You're okay, Laura Faye. You're okay, Laura Faye. Please, just leave me alone! <laughs> I hate you! I hate all of you! Stop! Laura! Boy, she really got sore. Oh, well. You know, chicks, no sense of humor. If you're coming over to have another heart-to-heart -heart talk, Miss Johnson, you can save your time. Miss McIntyre and I heard that you ran away from Jim, and, well, we just want to make sure you're okay. I'm okay. I wasn't before when I figured I was a female Einstein, but I'm okay now. What do you mean by that? Well, to thine own self be true, isn't that supposed to be the big message? Know yourself? Well, I'm beginning to know myself okay. I'm beginning to see myself just like everybody else does. And how's that? Like a creature from another planet, that's how. And don't expect me to go on with that TV quiz thing, because I won't. My mother knows this modeling agency that wants to sign me on. I can make a lot of money. I think that's a good idea. You do? Sure. Models make money, they wear beautiful clothes, and they get their pictures in magazines, so why not? Well, right. You know, I hear TV commercials paid quite well. I read where a girl made $500 for a half a day's work. Exactly. I mean, what good is it me trying to be a brain when all anybody ever notices is my body? And youth and beauty don't last forever. You might as well cash in while you can. If everybody thinks I'm just an object to stare at, well... That's what I'll be. Sure. Why make trouble for yourself? It's a lot easier to fall into what people think you are than to be what you really want to be. And you probably weren't interested in being anything but a model anyway. A girl who looks like you, it would be silly. I mean, no wonder the boys were laughing at you. Were you thinking of going on to college? Yes, as a matter of fact, I was. To study what? Literature, mostly. Were you thinking of teaching? I thought I might. What? Tell us. Well, I thought I might be a college professor. A professor? A girl who looks like you? <laughs> <laughs> well, what's so funny about that? Alice, can you imagine Laura Fay walking into a meeting of the uh, literary guild? I can't. <laughs> Frankly, I can't. I mean, that old society just might never be the same. Well, might be worth seeing. <laughs> you know, you two are just like all the rest. It doesn't matter to you that I stayed up all night and studied for that test and won it. No, all that matters is what I look like. Well, I don't care what you say, because I know more about literature than anyone else in that class, and you know it. I don't want to be a model, and I don't want to stand around and be stared at. I'll be what I want to be, and if I want to, I'll walk right down the center of that literary guild. And if they stare and joke at me, well, then that's just too bad for them. Because when I do, I'll know more about literature and poetry than all of them put together. She didn't uh, fall apart. And she didn't run away. She just stood right here and told us what she thought, face to face. Now, who'd have ever believed it? Miss McIntyre, Miss Johnson. You tricked me? Huh? Five more minutes and it's your turn. Don't be nervous. I'm not nervous. Are you nervous? We're not nervous. I'm
I am. Me too. Yeah, yeah well, me too. Will somebody please tell me what I'm doing here? I don't like competition. I don't want to be on TV. And I'm really a very nervous kid. Well, you could have fooled me. Thought you were some Mr. Cool. You got a couch, I'll lie down and tell you all about it. <laughs> you know, I don't see Laura Fay. Yeah, I thought she'd be here. Well, it's time to go in. I guess you changed your mind. Let's go in. I don't know if I can go on without my inspiration, Miss Johnson. Without Laura Fay at my side, I'm afraid I'm just doomed to mediocrity. Oh, here I am, Bernie. We were afraid you weren't coming. Well, you know me, I was just doing a little last minute cramming, Miss Johnson. Wait, I protest. With Laura Fay taking the exam, the results are just a foregone conclusion. How do you figure that? Well, the guys are gonna be staring at her. And that gives the girls an unfair advantage. Now, I demand that Laura Fay take the test in a separate room. <laughs> Bernie, let's go in. <laughs> Thank you, Bernie, for being so kind about my appearance. But I wonder if you'll feel as kindly toward me after the exam. What's going on here? Well, maybe I won't look quite the same to you after I've beaten your socks off in there. I don't understand. What happened to the dear, sweet, kind Laura Fay we all knew and teased? Come on, Bernie, it's time to take your medicine. Oh, wow, is that it? That's it. Guess what? What? Two from your class. Oh, oh. that's great. Aren't you proud? Yes. Oh. Richie, you're going to the city tournament. I know, so is Laura Fay. Oh, oh Laura, it's so super. I just know you're going to end up on TV. What do you wear? There's nothing sexy, of course. Congratulations, Laura Fay. It's really great. Thanks, Bernie. I'm sorry you couldn't be with us. Well, very interesting, but strange. See you later. <sighs> hey, who is that blonde? Oh, that's Laura Faye Flannery. She's the smartest chick in school. Oh, yeah? No kidding. Uh, excuse me. I'm the new guy in school, and I wondered if perhaps you could show me around. Oh, sh sure, okay. See you later, Laura. Hi. 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 Might that be a lesson to you, Alice? Never let them know that you're smarter than they are. You know something? Maybe women should be seen and not heard. I've always thought so. You don't really believe that. Do you believe that? I'll never tell. <laughs>